wonderful home. She's going to be cooking an Ecuadorian dish for us. I will let Stephanie give you a brief um, introduction for herself. Mm -hmm. If you want to go ahead and start. Yes. Hey, everyone. My name is Stephanie Flores. I'm Ecuadorian. I lived in the U.S. for about 17 to 18 years. And I made the move back home uh, to Ecuador about eight months ago. So super excited to be here. I know LaShawn from Virginia from 2013 13. Uh, when no, I went no, to college. When I went to college in Virginia. And yeah, we we're friends since then. And she came to visit last year when I decided to make the move. And then I convinced her to come yeah. and move here exactly. with me. <laughs> We came to visit, That's what, uh, that was during our exploratory visit to Ecuador, and ever since, we, it's been wonderful. So I've asked Stephanie to do an Ecuadorian dish for you all and for myself to try, because she cooks amazing meals. And so I would like uh, you all to enjoy this experience with us. Yes, and I'm making, should I? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm making a soup. So one thing you have to know about Ecuadorians is it gets really hot in Ecuador, but we still love our boiling hot soup. So we love soup, and um, we're fr I'm from the coast. We live in the coast currently in Salinas, Ecuador, and I'm making a soup dish with fish. Since we're in the coast, it's a very traditional Ecuadorian dish from the coast called chupe pescado. All right. So why did you choose this dish? Oof. Uh, chupe pescado has become one of my favorite dishes. Uh, from Ecuador, Ecuadorian cuisine, um, because it's, it's just different. So it has a little bit of everything that I like in food. So you will see as I show you the ingredients and all of that, but it has peanut butter, it has vegetables, it has fish, but it also has milk. So, uh, and the fish is fried. So it's, a, it's different. It's a different type of uh, soup. It's not your regular soup where you boil everything and that's your soup. So you'll see as we go through the process why I like this okay. so much. So you want to get started? Yeah. All right. Let's do this. All right. Awesome. So I'm going to show you all of the things that I have over here. Uh, Lashon very gracefully helped me clean up the fish because I'm scared of cleaning fish. <laughs> um, so we have here... Um, Two pounds of fish, roughly. One pound is a fillet of fish. It's uh, dorado fish, which I believe in the U.S. is mahi-mahi. Correct. Mahi-mahi fish. Uh, here we call it dorado because if you see the beautiful head of the fish, it has uh, dorado, which means in, in English means golden. has like a little golden glimpse, right? So we have a pound of bones that I'm going to use to make stock, and then the fish that I'm going to fry for later on. So some of the ingredients here, first, we have to make the stock, the fish stock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil some water. I already have some water here in the pot for the stock. And I'm going to boil it with the fish head and all of the other bones. And I'm going to add some garlic, green onions. And usually people use parsley, but I have tons of cilantro, so I'm just going to use cilantro. Uh, and it also gives it a really good flavor. So I'm going to put all of that in there. And we're going to let all of that boil with the fish bones for about, I will say, roughly 15 to 20 minutes. So it can get all of the flavors of the bones. And this is for the stock. So you'll get all of the bones. So the, the actual liquid of the soup has the fish flavor. And there you go. And we're going to cover that. Do I oh, I have more bones here. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I think that's all. I'm going to cover it so it can boil quicker. Let me see. Okay, and we'll let that uh, start to boil on the side. Now, what we make for Ecuadorian dishes is something called refrito which is the base of the dish that you're going to make. So for this dish specifically, the refrito is going to have garlic, red onions, green onions, which in Spanish is cebolla blanca, and if you translate it as white onions, but whatever. So green onions, red onions, peppers, green peppers, and garlic. People usually use uh, garlic paste that you can get from the market, but I just like to get my garlic uh, fresh and chop it up very, very finely. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 
in this big pot where I'm going to be boiling my soup later on. And we're gonna use something that is called achote. So achote is just a mixture of, uh, I don't know exactly what it's called in English, but it grows in a tree and it has color. So achote, it's like a fruit, but it's not, you eat it, but you have to cook it. It's not like an edible fruit. And people in the Amazon or indigenous folks actually use achote to color their faces. But we also use it for, for meals to give it color. So it's mixed with oil and we use that for our refritos to give color to your food. So we're gonna put some of that in there. Don't ask me about measurements because I just go by feeling. <laughs> That's a wonderful thing. <laughs> That's the best way to cook. You don't measure anything. So we just put the, the, um, the achote, let it get heat up a little bit and then we're gonna add all of this in there. And so, that's for the refrito. So when you put your vegetables, mm -hmm. I mean your herbs in there, the onion, you're actually sauteing to flavor yes. the soup. Yes. Okay. Yes, this is to make our base. Like I mentioned earlier, I really like this soup because it has peanut butter. Um, I get this peanut butter just because it's healthier and my grandmother who lives here with me um, cannot eat just any peanut butter because it messes her up. But this peanut butter, actually I got it from the market uh, and it's really good and I think they make it a little bit healthier because it doesn't make her have any kind of stomach ache or anything. So I'm gonna make the base with peanut butter and all of this veggies, but first I'm gonna refry my veggies until they are a little bit uh, crisp, crystal, looking crystal. Yes, transparent. Yeah, transparent. And then I'm gonna add a little bit, you can season this with um, cumin, salt, pepper, all of that, or you can use aliño which this Aliño, it's just a seasoning that already comes made that you get at the market. Um, it can be any brand, it's just called Aliño. So I think I'm gonna use just a little bit of that and a little bit of salt. I really like uh, pink salt, Himalaya salt to use, but you can use regular salt and cumin for that. So we're gonna refry all of that. And I wish you all were here so you can smell how good this is going to start to smell once it starts cooking. Yes. Oh man, I love refrito. Refrito, <laughs> I was telling Sean earlier, we make refrito for all of our Ecuadorian dishes, mostly all of our Ecuadorian dishes. Uh, the regular base is usually like peppers, tomatoes, uh, red onions, and cilantro, uh, and is used for a lot of different dishes. But for this one specifically, it's a little different with the green onions. So, so we're gonna make a refill. Do you again. eat rice with this soup? So it's it's about preference, right? So in this house we love rice, and Lashan and Steve love rice. So we are going to be making some rice and also sides of avocado slices, so they can try the way I like it. I like it with white rice, and I like it with avocado slices on the side. Some people just add lemon and eat it like that. Some lemon drops or lemon juice. Well. We call it limon, which I think for y'all, the green one is called lime. Yes. Yeah, but we call it limon here, which is lemon. Uh, and that's the only type of limon that we have here, the only type of lemon that we have here. So you refry that, we'll let it cook for a little bit, a few minutes before we add the peanut butter. So we gotta make sure that it cooks a little bit before we add the peanut butter. So for the peanut butter, you can add as much as you like, depending on how how much you love peanut. Because <laughs> if you don't want the whole peanut flavor, you just put a little bit. Um, I like to make like a balance. So probably like I'll do like a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half um, for this one. Usually for the smaller pot, when it's less of, less of us, I use one tablespoon. So for this one, I might use a little bit more since I'm making more soup this time. Okay. Now, Stephanie, can you choose any other fish or um, dorado is the preferred fish for this meal? Yeah, so I just love mahi-mahi dorado with anything, fried dorado in soup. But for this soup specifically, you can use dorado or uh, the other one is called corvina. Now, I don't know if y'all know the name of that one in, in the U.S., corvina. but it's a, it's, a, it's a white fish. It's a light fish, just like dorado is a light fish too. So you I can use corvina they, or dorado. I think they were saying corvina is sort of like a trout. Is that right, Steve? I'm not sure. I think um, we were speaking to someone and they said they think corvina is like a trout because it's a it's it's a meaty fish, right? It's yes, 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 yes. Okay. it is, it is, and it's it's just when it cooks, it's very very white. Um, but I I just love dorado's flavor. Okay, it's just a good fish. 
Okay, so I think this is ready to get some peanut butter in it. Mm -mm. Just add it here. So while you're cooking, mm -hmm. I just want to ask you, like, why did you choose Salinas over other places in Ecuador? Um, oof. that's a very deep question for me <laughs> um, because I've been, so I'm from Guayaquil, which is one of the main cities in the country. It's one of, it's the second largest city in Ecuador. Um, and I grew up there, but since I was a little kid, since I can remember probably four or five years old, mm -hmm. my grandmother used to bring me to the beach every year for season. So season here is when it's really hot, beach weather, the waters are warm, and that's usually between December and April. So she used to bring me every year. Sometimes we will stay only on the weekend. Sometimes we will actually rent a house and stay here for a month. So it's, it's the place that I've been coming to since I was a child and I have so many beautiful things. So what I'm doing right now, let me make a pause right there. What I'm doing right now is adding some water just to get the, the peanut butter to not be so compressed. And I'm gonna mix it, because like I, like I mentioned, this is going to be the base right. of our soup. So I'm just making sure that this is all mixing really well. There, you can add just regular water, but since we're making the fish soup, might as well just use that same water. Yeah. It has to be hot water, mm -hmm. so it, the peanut butter starts dissolving. And then, I had chopped already all of this before, but we have here some corn. This is Ecuadorian corn. It's a white grain. It's tender, so it cooks fairly fast. And then I have carrots, potatoes, and cabbage. And we're going to add all of this here, and we are going to mix it. So as you can see, we, I cut a whole big carrot, about two and a half potatoes, and just like two layers of... Um, Cabbage. Okay. So then you're gonna mix it all with the with the paste on the bottom, and we're gonna have all of this mixing so all of the flavors blend together. But yeah, back to the question. So yeah, so I just love the ocean because I have so many beautiful memories from the ocean, and I love to swim in the ocean. So. It's just the place where I want it to be. It's, it's a different lifestyle than the city. Because even though Guayaquil, where I'm from, it's a small city, it's city life, right? Like you have the traffic, the buildings, a lot of people. And here is more chill, more laid back, a lot of seafood. I love to eat. Uh, so that's one thing that I really enjoy here. I can eat a lot of different dishes, make my own dishes, get fresh seafood all the time. Like we can get uh, octopus, clams, fish, shrimp, um, crabs, lobster, everything that you can imagine that is seafood, you get it here. So I really like that. And that's why I decided to move here. Awesome, that they, I mean, that's one of the reasons we decided to move here as well, because you got the, the market, you yeah. got the fresh um, seafood here that you can't get like in the US. Right. So that's the reason why we're in Salinas as well. Mm -hmm. So I know that you talked about you had a trip to the Amazon. Oh, I did. Yes. How was that experience? Oh, man. Um, I went to the Amazon in 2018 uh, with a fellowship that I got for research on um, Amazonians culture, but also the way that they organize politically. Um, and I just wanted to learn more about it. Um, I spent three months in the Amazon, also learning about you know their cuisine, which is part of the culture, uh, a lot about their practices, a lot of their agricultural practices, their communal practices, and it was just a beautiful experience. I definitely encourage anyone that wants to visit Ecuador to definitely plan to visit the Amazon, which I'm convincing LaShawn to do with me. 
soon. Okay. <laughs> I'm putting her in the video so she can not say that I didn't say that. <laughs> uh, so it's just a beautiful experience that the way of living in the Amazon is different from anything you can imagine. It's very communal. People live in communities, but it's more like families. Right. right? And they do this thing in Spanish. It's called recipro 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 reciproco, where it's like if, you know, my neighbor is planting um, corn and carrots and potatoes, and I'm planting over here fruits and other things, we share. Okay. Right, so I'll bring them over some fruits, and then my other neighbor that has that has a, a pond in in their land, they are growing tilapia. They'll bring it over here, and we'll give them some fruit. So you kind of bartering. Yes, okay. yes, it's very communal. It, it's it's really beautiful. Um, you know, indigenous people really are protectors of land. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of what they do as well. They work the land. They protect the land. And they are, one thing that really like, uh, was very interesting to me and I loved it was how connected they are with earth yes. and nature and the ocean, the water. Um, well, they, mainly in the Amazon you see a lot of rivers, but they're all coming from, the, they're all going to the oceans. But the way that they are connected to nature is just, it's an amazing thing. But yeah, so let's. See, so the fish bones still have like another 10 minutes okay. to cook. So we're just going to put this. It smells good. Very, very low. So it doesn't burn up. Yes, I know. I just love the refrito, which is, again, all of the veggies that we uh, kind of fry, like saute with a, with a um, achote. They smell just so good. It's just so good, so good. So meanwhile, everything, it's already, so if you can see closer here, everything already has the, the, the base, like the veggies, the peanut butter and all of that. So everything is going to have the flavor for that. So I'm just going to cover this so it doesn't burn up while we wait for our fish stock to get ready. So let me ask you, are there any other places in Ecuador you would like to visit that you haven't visited? Mm, yes, there's one place that I would love to visit, but it's, it's a little complicated together because it's an island. Oh. So it's, I'm sure everyone has heard of the Galapagos Islands. So the Galapagos Islands are, are part of Ecuador, uh, but there are an island and you need to get there either by plane or by boat. Um, and is a natural reserve, so everything is protected by the government uh, because it's one of like, it, what is it that they call it? Like a hot biodiversity spot, like a hot spot for biodiversity. Mm -hmm. I've seen pictures. Uh, a lot of some of my family members have traveled there, and it's just amazing. You can actually like see like uh, sea life really up close, okay. you know, but everything is protected. So for example, you cannot like mistreat anything yeah. or kill any animals or take anything. So I've, I've been wanting to go there. I just haven't had the chance because it's a little expensive to get there. So if you're actually an Ecuadorian that lives in Ecuador and you're, minimum, you're making minimum wage, which is around $400 a month, it's really hard to make that kind of trip yeah. um, because when I was looking at it, the fly alone was $700. Yeah. And then you have to take a boat. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of money, right? right? It will take probably like two month salaries for an Ecuadorian person to go there. Right. Um, but I know sometimes there are different um, offers going on and with their off season, it mm -hmm. might be a little bit cheaper. Okay. Um, and they also have a fee to enter the, the island. Uh, yeah. yeah, so that is one place that I really want to visit just because I love the ocean. I love, uh, I love nature, I love animals, so I definitely want to go visit there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're definitely an animal lover. I do love animals. <laughs> <laughs> Just so for those of you have, who have watched our videos, Stephanie has a dog and a cat, and yes, I'm visiting her. Um, her cat is upstairs. She <laughs> knows that I have a phobia, but I'm trying my best. And we're working, she's working with me 
on my phobia and it's coming along. It's, it's not something that's gonna happen overnight. It's slowly, slowly, very slowly getting there. She's getting there. She actually came inside the house today while my cat was still inside the house. That's progress. <laughs> So now what I'm going to do is, it's been about 15 minutes that the bones have been boiling. I'm gonna get, what do you call this in English? A uh, colander. A, a strainer. It's a strainer, but Strainer, it's like a colander. colander. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to strain the fish bones so I can um, use the stock. So I'm gonna, let me rinse this real quick. We don't want any soap in, in there. The, the stock is set in the water, right? Hmm? Yes, it's the stock. I'm putting the stock in there. So we have. So you're putting the stock inside of the base. Yes. yes. Okay. I will do that, but I have to strain it. And you must have noticed my pot is missing some parts. <laughs> but this is a very old pot that my mom has since she was a very young woman, um, and it it just it's I think it's like pure acero. How do you call acero in English? Iron, stainless steel. stainless steel, I don't know, acero, it's called acero. <laughs> so it's pure acero, uh, it's a bigger pot than I usually use for my small family. And I'm actually probably going to need a little help here, LaShawn, okay. to hold this so I can put the stock here. Because the, the colander is small. If Do you, you need can, this? No, you can use this too. Okay. And I'm well, gonna if you're just, not going to pour it on me, I don't need it. You okay, I'm going to put it there. Okay. Yeah, but it's missing parts because it's really, really old. You're not hot? No. Okay. The steam is missing me. Good. I want to get all of the liquid out. Oops. Whoops. We got some fish flying out of the pot. There you go. And let me turn this one off back here. And you want to set this over it? Yeah. Thank you, Lashawn. You're welcome. Thank you for being my helper today. Oh, you're welcome. So now what I'm going to do is mix everything because, again, we have the base on the bottom. And I'm going to put it higher so it can actually boil. So now we're going to leave all of this veggies and stuff to boil about... 15 minutes. Okay. We're going to let it boil and then I'm going to show you all of the other things that I'm going to add in a little bit. So mainly we're almost done. So once you start cooking this, once you've done all of the prep, like washing the fish, cutting the fish and all of that, it should take about 40 minutes to make this dish. Um, so it's not as lab laborious, what's the word? Like labor intensive yeah. as other <laughs> Ecuadorian dishes. This is one of the reasons why I also chose this one uh, because it's not as bad. Uh, and it's a delicious recipe. So I'm just mixing all of it because there was some peanut uh, paste in the bottom of the pot. So I'm just trying to get all of that to mix with the liquid. So once all of that is done and I'm done getting all of the base from the bottom, I'll let it boil for 15 minutes. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the, the fried fish. Um, but then after that, what, what else we need here? We need milk and... Mm -mm, the oregano and the cilantro. So I think those are the only thing missing. The only things missing here, after frying the fish as well. Okay. So, so you're gonna add those ingredients after, after you get the boil. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, well, I'm gonna let it boil for 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna add the the oregano. I'm gonna add cilantro. No, cilantro is last. So I'm gonna add the oregano and the milk. All right, y'all. So it's been like. 20 minutes that everything has been boiling. I tasted it, I put some salt because it needed some salt. So right now, uh, also, I um, boil the milk. We use this lactoxada, which is like lactose-free because of grandma, again. Uh, and a couple of folks here <laughs> they can have uh, lactose. So we, we always, you can adapt, right? Like the oil, for example, that I'm using right now to fry the fish is like um, sunflower seed oil. But if you can, I usually use olive oil, but this one is obviously better for browning and get it very crispy. So I'm using that one right now, but you can always adapt, uh, use alternatives, right, for your health or if you want to get it healthier or whatever. So here I'm using some just regular um, flour 
to put the fish, uh, to bread the fish and fry it. It's already been seasoned. I seasoned it with aliño, again, which is the mix of garlic, cumin, and all of those things. And I put a little bit of salt and uh, cumin, powdered cumin. And I'm just going to go ahead and fry this. So, Stephanie, mm -hmm. since you're frying the fish, is the fish served with the soup on side or inside, uh, like inside of the soup? How yeah. do you eat the, uh, eat the fish with the soup? So once it's all fried, we're going to get a couple of them, usually half of all of the fish that you fry, and we put it back in the soup. And we let it sit there for about five, 10 minutes. And the other ones are just gonna stay out. And you're gonna put one piece of like crispy fried fish in every dish. And the other ones are already going to be, you know, wet from the soup. Okay. Yeah, so it can get some more flavor. But that's one of the reasons why we did the stock. So the actual liquid of the soup has the fish flavor. Some people don't do it that way. Some people just at the end put the fish and let that little bit of fish flavor be in the soup. Um, but it's, again, it's about like taste and preference, but this is usually how I prefer it. So also here on the side, I have some oregano. Like I took out the little sticks. This is dry oregano that I'm gonna put in the soup as well as it's finished cooking. I think that should be good. And then you mix it. Okay, and let me mix this. So if a person, I'm not sure if you said this, but if someone didn't want fried fish, could they drop the fish in the soup or would it make it too fishy so it's different right like the chupa de pescado is that is with fried fish okay that's the dish itself there's a lot of other fish ecuadorian fish soups that don't require fried fish but for the chupa it is fried okay um but then you have in cebollado which you've had before you have the sancocho which is peanut based but it doesn't have milk so while you were gone I also boil some the milk, so we're gonna put that in the soup as well, cause it's almost done cooking. So we're gonna just pour it there, and then we're gonna stir it. And then after you put the milk and the uh, oregano, it should boil like five minutes. Okay. By that time, uh, the fish should be almost done, and then we'll let it just sit and we'll turn it off. Okay. Mm hmm. So Smells we'll, good too. Yes, yes, yes. And come look at it because yes. it looks so nice. So you have like the corn, the carrots, the potatoes, the cabbage, everything. So we're going to let it get the oregano flavor and the milk for about five minutes while we finish frying the fish. So Steve wanted to know, how did you learn about this dish? Like how... Did someone in your family teach you how to make this dish? So, uh, grandma, my grandma is 85, going to 86 years old. So, when she turned 80, it was harder for her because she has arthritis to cook and do a lot of things. So, after she turned 80, she hasn't been able to cook. But she used to make this fish uh, when I was younger. And I really enjoy her. She cooked amazing. My mom got her cooking skills, and I think I got their cookies, cooking skills, okay. uh, but because after she turned 80, she hasn't been cooking much, um, you know, like she doesn't do it anymore, So, but she loves this dish, so I like to make it because she loves to eat it with aguacate, she loves <laughs> soup with aguacate, with avocados, so that's one of the reasons why I make it for her, um, but to learn mainly, you know, remembering the things that she put in it, and obviously YouTube. I did YouTube it from some uh, Ecuadorian, back when I started redoing it a couple of years ago, um, I, I YouTube some Equ an Ecuadorian chef that actually does this, mm -hmm. um, just to make sure that I got all the steps right. Okay. Um, but yeah, and then I never follow recipes because I like to taste it. Exactly. And, and yeah. you know, like I said, like I like to adapt it, right? Like I like to use certain things. So like I said, with adjustments to it. Right, I make adjustments to it. Um, and then we're going to let this cook well before we take it out because we have more fish to fry. Okay. And again, probably these are going to be the ones that I'm going to put in the soup okay. um, to get the flavor of the fried fish. This soup is ready. All we have to do is put the fish, and I'm going to also put some cilantro in here, which I chopped while we were on break over here. Is the boiling yet? 
Once it boils, I'll put everything. Yeah. Yeah, and that's about it with the fish. That's just gonna fry over there. We're gonna put the cilantro. This is just fresh chopped cilantro, just to get that fresh taste. Yes, I love cilantro. Oh yes, 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 yes. I actually had a friend that um, she said the cilantro tasted like soap, soap. for her. Yes. Some people do. Um, yeah, and depending I, on your DNA, yeah. certain uh, foods taste like soap. Um, some foods come out of your out of your pores. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I think I had a friend who does. Someone doesn't like soap. I mean, not soap. <laughs> so cilantro. <laughs> I hope they don't like tea soap. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it just depends on your DNA. Um, certain foods taste differently. Yeah, yeah and. Thankfully, I don't have a problem because I love cilantro. Cilantro just gives this like fresh flavor right. to everything, really. I love cilantro in my soups and, and my beans right. and my pasta. It's just amazing. And it smells so good, too. Yes. I love it. But yeah. I love soup. it in guacamole. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's of good. course, again, with avocado. Yes, avocados <laughs> are the best. So how do you say avocado in Spanish? Aguacate. Aguacate. So it's like you saying agua, mm -hmm. you know, water, agua, and then you add cate. Aguacate. Aguacate. Yeah, there you go. Yes. So this will take a little bit more. I'm going to turn this off because let me show you here. So the whole idea, you want to come closer, Steve? The whole idea is for the potatoes to start dissolving a little bit on the edges so the soup gets uh, creamier. creamier. Yeah, yeah, it gets like a denser uh, texture. So the, the potatoes are there already. You see how it's already dissolving on the sides. So I'm just going to go and turn this off and wait for my fish to sit in there. And we want the fish to be fully cooked inside this. This fish right here a little thick, so I'm letting it cook a little bit more. And then it should be good to be put in the soup. Awesome. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm hungry. <laughs> I love food. So we'll come back um, in, with the final preparation so you all can see the final dish. Yes. So about the avocados, usually it will be greener and more presentable, but the avocado that we got was not good. <laughs> this <laughs> is the portion good. that we can get. Yeah, this is the portion that we can get. <laughs> As you can see, the soup here has the, the corn, the veggies, the cabbage, carrots, the oregano. Inside, let me show you with a, a spoon actually. Well, I got a fork over here. But inside, under you have the fish that had been soaking in the soup, right? And then on top, the presentation is always with the fried fish on top. So you put half of your fried fish in the soup and let it sit there for five, 10 minutes. And then the other fried fish is just for the top of the, of the dish. And then you eat it with rice, with avocados, and people like to put lemon on it because it's fish. So people do that as well. So yeah, that's it. So thank you so much, Stephanie, for cooking this amazing dish. We are ecstatic about trying it. And thank you for being so wonderful and inviting us to your home to experience this dish, yes, Ecuadorian I, dish. Hey, we love to feed people, Ecuadorians. <laughs> I love to feed people. That's how we show our love through feeding folks. So yeah, I'm glad that you're here. Yeah, so. she's been feeding us well. <laughs>